Now let's take a look at tangents to a circle. So the terminology, what's a tangent? A tangent is a line that touches a circle at exactly one point. So again, if we take a line segment and I need it to touch exactly one point, so this isn't going to work, and obviously that's not going to work, not touching the circle. So having it touch the circle at exactly one single point right there, and that point is called our point of tangency. We have our tangent to the circle and our point of tangency. Now, if we were to join the point of tangency to the center of the circle, what happens is we should, if I've done it correctly, have a right angle or perpendicular. So if we were to connect, then imagine the center of the circle to any other point on our tangent, will we have a right angle? No. The only time that the center of the circle to the tangent creates a right angle is at the point of tangency. A chord drawn perpendicular to a tangent at the point of tangency contains the center of the circle and is a diameter. So again, if we were simply to extend that radius that I had drawn in, so from the point of tangency, and remember a chord must go from one side of the circle to the other side of the circle, and there's our diameter that passes through the center of the circle. If you take a look at the geometer sketch pad file, you'll see that we've indicated the center of the circle C, point A is the point of tangency, and this long line is our tangent. The measure of angle B a, C, or we can also call it C, A, B, is at a 90 degree angle. So again, the radius from the center of the circle to the point of tangency creates a right angle. Of course, if we were to extend it, we would have the diameter. If I grab point A and move it elsewhere on the circle, you can see that the angle does not change. Now using our understanding of tangents, chords, and angles, those being inscribed in central angles, we can put it all together to solve problems and determine missing angles and missing lengths. If you look in your textbook on page 396, you'll see this example. So it gives us lots of information within our diagram, and we'll mark a couple of things that we know on here. So it tells us that line segment AF is tangent to the circle at point E. So remember, if it's tangent at point E, point E is our point of tangency. Line segment DF contains the diameter DB, and angle CFE is 34 degrees. So what are the measures of angle CEF? angles ECF and angle EDF. Well, let's start with angle CEF. So that's this one right here. Well, because we know that point E is our point of tangency, let's just write that in, then since CE happens to also be the radius, what can we say is that angle CEF must be perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle. So angle CEF is 90 degrees because it joins the center of the circle to the point of tangency. Let's take a look now at our next angle, angle ECF. Well, knowing now that 
this is a 90 degree angle, and that the sum of angles in any triangle is 180 degrees. So if we know two of our angles, we can easily find our third angles by subtracting those two that we know from 180 degrees. Therefore, angle ECF is equal to 180 degrees minus our 90 and also minus our 34 degrees. So the angle ECF is equal to 56 degrees. In terms of angle EDF, we can see a larger triangle here which I think lots of people would get drawn to. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of information. We don't know what angle DEC is. However, if we go back to our very first lesson on inscribed and central angles, let's take a look at arc EB, and you can see that central angle ECB is here, and we already know that this is 56 degrees. And what is the other angle that is subtended on that same arc? Well, let's use a different color here. Angle EDB is also subtended on that same arc. And remember what is the relationship between central angles and inscribed angles subtended by the same arc? and that is that inscribed angles are half that of the central angle. So if angle ECB is 56 degrees, then angle EDF or EDB is equal to half of that. So 56 degrees divided by 2, which is 28 degrees. And we can say that this is because angle EDF is the inscribed angle subtended by the same arc as central angle ECF. Now let's take a look at the example on page 397. A little bit more complicated, lots of information given, but let's just take our time and we'll break this down. So it tells us that PQ, small little tangent, hits our circle at point Q, our point of tangency, and QR is the diameter of the circle. So even before we go on, right off the bat we should see since Q is our point of tangency and it's passing through the center, we know that this is going to be a right angle and we should mark that on our diagram. Tells us that QR again is the diameter of our circle. Segment PQ is 9 millimeters, PR is 41 millimeters, and triangle QC S is an equilateral triangle. Without it even actually telling us an equilateral triangle, we could also see that because of these little ticks. Because they are the same one on each side, we should be able to know that those are equal lengths, therefore an equilateral triangle. So when it asks us what is the length of the diameter QR, given that we already know that QP is 9 millimeters, PR is 41 millimeters, and angle Q is a right angle, we can use Pythagorean theorem to come up with length QR. If you want to see it a little bit closer, we can draw that out. And so, let's just bring that down here. So we see that this is 9 millimeters, the hypotenuse is 41 millimeters, and this is our Q. So, because we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or we could say that c squared minus a squared equals b squared, so 41 squared minus 9 squared is 
b squared. So 1,681 minus 81 is b squared. b squared is 1,600. Again, to determine what b is, let's just move this down. To determine what b is, we need to find the square root, which is then 40 millimeters. So that tells us that our diameter, our Q, is 40 millimeters. And a little bit difficult to mark on the screen. Maybe I'll go to a thinner pen. So 40 millimeters is our diameter. The length of cord QS. Well, if we know that our diameter is 40 millimeters, then what can you, what else can you instantly tell me? The radius, hopefully you're saying, is 20 meter, 20 millimeters. So, for part B, given diameter RQ is 40 millimeters, then radius CQ must be the diameter divided by 2, which is 20 millimeters. And if we know that CQ is 20 millimeters, then hopefully we can see that by this tick or that reminder of QCS being an equilateral triangle, that length QS is equal to CQ, which must then also be 20 millimeters. Looking at part C, what is the length of chord RS? Well, looking at chord RS, once again, we're looking at inscribed and central angles. So if we look at this large arc RQ, we have central angle RCQ, 180 degrees, inscribed angle RSQ, which is half of that. That tells us this angle is 90 degrees. And once again, we can use Pythagorean theorem to solve. So let's just finish part C. So recapping what I had started, um, we know that angle RCQ is a central angle for arc RQ. And RCQ is 180 degrees. Angle RSQ is the inscribed angle for that same arc, subtending from that same arc RQ, and so therefore it is half of the central angle being 90 degrees. So once again, we have a right triangle there, and we can label those sides. We have RSQ as our vertices. We know that SQ is the same as QS and 20 millimeters. We know that RQ is the diameter at 40 millimeters. And so once again, we're trying to find one of the legs of the triangle. So adapting Pythagorean theorem, we can say that C squared minus A squared is equal to B squared, or 40 squared minus 20 squared is equal to B squared. So 1,600 minus 400 is equal to b squared. So b squared is 1,200, taking the square root and rounding to the nearest millimeter, we have b as approximately 35 millimeters. So your homework then is topic 3. And we're looking at completing page 399 to 403, numbers 2, 3, 6 through 9, 11 through 17, and 20. Lots of examples in the textbook. Again, please talk to Mrs. Adam or Ms. Elston or Ms. Bertram if you have any particular questions that you would like to go through. Um, and the test will be later next week, Wednesday, May the 12th.